Today in our ongoing series of audio myths and trying to dispel them, we're going to talk about something that confuses people greatly. And that is power handling of a loudspeaker versus amplifier power. Now, this came out of some comments to a previous video I did on are my speakers blown and how to tell. And there is this common misconception that people have that if they have a speaker that's let's say rated to handle 200 watts and their amplifier is only 100 watts that there's no way that they can actually damage their speaker because you know if the speaker can handle 200 watts and the amps only 100 well I'm fine I'm below the power well unfortunately it doesn't work like that there are many different things at play one problem is, is that there isn't really standardization that most manufacturers use on how they rate power handling of a loudspeaker. There are actually standards, international standards, that tell you how you should measure and how you should specify the power handling of a loudspeaker, but many manufacturers just throw a number out there and, and who knows really how, unless they've specified they're following a particular standard, who knows how they come up with that, that number. One thing that's very important to realize is that even if you follow a standard for power rating of a speaker, usually the test signal that's used is wideband and it's fairly continuous. What I mean by that is that it handles pretty evenly a wide range of frequencies that the speaker might cover. Sometimes it's what's called pink noise or white noise or some modifications of those things. But often those power tests don't include the kind of dynamics and the kind of frequency response bumps that you might uh, encounter in music or in you know, sound effects in movies. So let's say, for instance, that you put on, you know, a track that's got a real heavy, really low thumping bass note. Well, you can easily, even with only that 100 watt amplifier, overdrive the woofer in a speaker that has a power rating of 200 watts because those peaks of every one of those heavy thumping bass beats might be either clipping the amplifier, so you're overdriving the amp and uh, producing a bunch of uh, distortion and other nasty things uh, into the loudspeaker and actually dumping more power than the actual rating of the amplifier seems to be into the speaker. Um, or if it's a really good amplifier, it may have dynamic power capability that's way above 100 watts, might be 200, 300, 400 watts for a short amount of time when those bass thumps are happening in the music. So, you know, just because you're following some numbers, you know, specifications will lie to you. And this is a perfect case. You cannot simply go, well, you know, I can't possibly have damaged my new speakers because, you know, uh, I, you know the volume control was only at 75% and my amplifiers, you know, only half or three quarters of the power handling of the speaker. So nothing can be wrong with them. And unfortunately, when that person goes onto the forums to say, why is my speaker sounding funny? Uh, people may or may not tell him, hey, guess what? You may have damaged your speakers. So don't follow those rules. Now, what should you follow? This is just really a common sense thing. If you hear the, your speakers making any sort of strange noises, like every one of those bass thumps, there's a little click or a tick or a crack sound or something like that. It sounds like something mechanical is going on that doesn't seem to be part of the music. Turn the volume control down. You are probably going to damage your speakers if you keep that up. Another thing which coincides with amplifier clipping is is the speaker, is the music starting to sound really harsh, really shrill, you know, something, you know, it, it really hurts your ears? Often that means you've hit the limits of something, whether your amplifier or your speaker, and it's telling you to turn it down. So that's, that's one thing that you can really, really use, and it's really the only thing is use your ears and use your common sense. 
Now, there is one other thing. If you really massively overdrive a speakers, uh, your pair of speakers, you may actually start to smell something. When voice coils heat up, typically the resin that's used to bond the magnet wire that makes up the voice coils, there's a distinct electrical smell. It's not really a burning smell, but it's like, I don't know how to describe it, hot electronics. If, you, if you've ever been you know, around something that's got too hot, some wires or whatever that's got too hot. So absolutely, if you start smelling something that sounds like something, you know, electronic, some really foreign thing that you're smelling in your, in your listening room, boy, oh boy, if you've got the tunes cranking, turn it down, you're gonna break something. So hopefully that dispels one of the common myths about, you know, just because my amp is not uh, as powerful as my speakers will handle doesn't mean you can't, uh, you can't still damage them. So thanks a lot for watching, and if you have any comments, please include them below.